back to the balance sheet, go into the income statement, updating the income statement. We should have the sales in here, but only for the amount we charged, not including the sales tax. So we have these two line items for the uh, Eric Music that pulled in. I think those look correct. They went to the proper sales account. So that is good. Going back, the other side back to the balance sheet should be in a liability account, sales tax liability, because we're gonna have to pay that. That's our, basically like a, our usage type of tax for the Eric Music one. So I think that uh, is correct, I think. Uh, yeah, and then we're gonna go back on over and then check out the inventory. Here's where we wanna, we're, uh, we wanna make sure this is pulling in properly, the inventory. Going into the inventory report and scrolling on down. And we're gonna see we have the inventory that's pulling in for these two amounts, which are the cost, you'll recall, and not actually the, the amount on the sales price. That 20,000, for example, if I drill down on the source document, we charged 25,000, that's the cost. So it looks like it did that properly. So that looks good. Going back and back, going to the income statement, updating the income statement, we should see the other side in cost of goods sold. Cost of the goods sold. That one has to think, cost of goods sold. So there's those two, they look correct. The impact on the income statement is the revenue, the sales minus uh, the cost of goods sold. So that's good. And then if I go back to the income statement, we also have the accounts receivable broken out by subledger, by customer. So let's open up another report, tab to the right, right click and duplicate that tab. And let's just take a look at the subledger report by going to the accounting dropdown reports and scroll on down to the aged uh, receivable summary report, if we may. And so now this is broken out by our customers. And so now we've got Eric Music. So the total comes out to 38,671.50, which should be on the balance sheet, 38,671.50. In practice, we would track that over here in our open invoices when we're trying to collect on it, most likely, where we have our uh, uh, Eric Music invoice here, awaiting payments, it's in the awaiting payments. We can also see it in customers, in the contacts. And then we wanna check out the inventory, making sure that our subledger for inventory ties out. Let's go to the tab to the right, right click on it, duplicate it again and then go to the reports again and let's do it this way this time and then i'm going to just type in inventory inventory item list let's check that one out and see if it ties out to what it should it's in 2023 it should be good so now we've got our inventory broken out by item and the cost line 15678 should tie out to the balance sheet 15678 MUI B to the N. And we note that the billable items report, these two should go away because we did those. So updating this report, those two are gone, no longer have the billable items there. So again, not a perfect system with these billable items to use them for inventory, but it kind of works. And again, we'll see more of the, of the pros and cons of these billable items uh, in other ways that we can use them in the future. But let's Let's do it one more time for the second one. So we'll just repeat the process and just to see it now that we have an, an idea of what is going on here. What is going on? A lot of crazy stuff, a lot of crazy stuff going on. That's what I'm talking about, but not as much crazy stuff as, uh, this is still crazy, but any case, this is going into Jan, Jan uh, 24, Jan 24. And let's imagine this goes to Feb 24 for the due date, Feb 24 invoice reference standard, boom, boom. The billable item pops up now. So we're gonna say, yeah, pull that in, por favor. That's the one we want. And so we're just gonna add that in, boom. And so it does, it looks beautiful that it has the item and everything. But once again, that the price pulled in the cost and then it also didn't bring in the account or the tax code. So still a little bit, a little bit weird. 
You might try to change it here and like reselect it and, and it pulls in. The thing I'm a little bit skeptical, so that works quite well. The thing I'm a little bit skeptical when I did that, however, is whether or not when I record that, it will take it out of uh, this report for the billable expenses. So notice all I did right there is I said, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna select the same item right here after I already pulled it in. And then, and then it updated everything beautifully. So that might be a way that you can use this properly. You have to make sure to do that, which you couldn't forget to do that because if you did, then it wouldn't record because you, there wouldn't be populated fields in the account or the tax code or, or anything. Uh, but, but then we just, I'll test this one out and just make sure that if you were to do that, that it properly uh, removes the item from the billable report over here. All right, let's check it out. So that, what, is this, what is this gonna do then? This is an invoice. So it's gonna increase the accounts receivable by the uh, 81585. But I'm also skeptical of this because notice that it also changed the quantity when I did that. So I don't think that's, I don't think that's the best way to go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna refresh this. I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and not record it and then do it again. So I'm gonna hit the drop down and then say we want the invoice. And then I'm gonna say this is gonna be going to, who did, who is this for again? This is gonna go to our music stuff store. So we'll say music stuff store. There's our billable item. I'll pull in the billable item again and I'll fix it the way we did before. So I'm gonna say the date is gonna be uh, 1 Jan 24, let's say. Due date Feb, uh, Feb, tw Feb 24, let's say. And then I'm just gonna put down here, I'm just gonna type it in again, GSB, just to see the actual uh, price, because that's the cost. So there's the price, 777. And then I'm gonna put the sales code here, which is 4,000 and then the tax populates and then delete the second one. So not a perfect kind of pullover, but it gives you that kind of indication. So now what's it gonna do? Well, this is gonna increase the accounts receivable by the 815850. The other side uh, then go into revenue for the 7,770, and then the accounts payable going up by the 38850, and then the inventory going down by the amount that was on there before, because that was the cost, and then the cost of goods sold going up. That's the expense related to the to the purchase of the inventory, the net impact and net income, sales minus that cost of goods sold, the sub-ledger for accounts receivable, uh, broken out by customer, also impacted for music stuff store, the customer, and the inventory sub-ledger will be going down for the items that we sold as well, and the uh, billable report should be reduced for having for us having pulled over this billable item so let's approve it and then say all right let's check it out approved uh there's been an error gsb only only nine items available to sell okay i'm going into negative territory tory on the inventory item so i'm going to add another inventory item i'm going to right click on the tab up top and duplicate it and they're not letting me duplicate it i'll go to the tab uh let's go to the tab to the right right click and duplicate that one and i'll bring that all the way over here to the left and let's go into our product so i'm going to go into the accounting drop down up top or the business drop down uh what was it business drop down that's the one i want products and services and i'm just going to add one more item so that we can record this properly so what am i on here we're on a GSB needs one more item. So a GSB is this one and uh, we have nine of them. I need one more. So I'm gonna make an adjustment. I'm gonna make an adjustment and I'm gonna say we want an increase in the quantity as of 